And we've been prompted to call this emergency meeting here today, which is open to members and activists of all unions. And it is an emergency meeting. It's been called at uh, relatively short notice. And we've called it because there is an emergency. And the emergency is the danger of losing all the momentum generated by the incredible strike on November the 30th. Well, I think the attendance of the conference is fantastic. I think the initiative of the PCS left unity in calling it was absolutely what we needed at this particular time. And I think the mood is one of understanding we're at a very pivotal stage to try and ensure that as many unions as possible stick together. And once we know how many are still standing, that we talk about the industrial action that's needed to win. And I have to say to you that the difficulty in getting to where we go was most clearly exposed in the talks that Kevin Courtney and I, along with other TUC leaders, went to with the government. Because not once, but twice, in June and on the 2nd of November, the most senior trade unionists in Britain, openly in front of government ministers at the negotiations, made it clear they did not agree with what we were saying. They did not agree that we should throw out the heads of agreement and they made it clear that we spoke not for the trade union movement, but only for ourselves. And once the government had seen the power of what we did on November the 30th, I think they then decided that now is the time to move quickly and try to divide and split up the trade union movement. Now I can't think of a more serious error. When you just had the best strike that we've seen in this country for years, to suddenly all scatter off and disperse into separate scheme talks and indicate that settlements were possible within the government's central framework. Well, the PCS will be going to the TUC meeting on Thursday and we will be arguing that there should be a further public sector-wide strike urgently on the same basis as November the 30th. But all the signs are that some unions want to pull away from that and so our view is once we know who is left and who isn't, we want an urgent meeting of those unions who still want to fight on to discuss exactly the type of industrial action that is going to be needed to win. All of you need to realise, the whole movement needs to realise now, what a momentous change you've brought about. What a momentous change. We've had 30 years of near bankrupt trade union bureaucracy and bankrupt passivity. And the result is that we, within a generation we've had the trade union membership hard. But look on what you've done, all of you, over the last 18 months. You've forced a pace of resistance. I'm very pleased to say that my union, the NUT, has not signed up to the agreement, that we're demanding much more than £1.50, that we can't settle for this, that we have to carry on the fight. I'm very proud that in the teachers' scheme alone, we're already doing that alongside the NAS, UWT, UCU and ICAC, and I hope that the other teacher unions will come back to this position as well. All those unions have refused to sign up to the pensions agreement in the teacher scheme alone. We have to fight for an understanding that these cuts are just the first. They're not necessary, they're unfair, ideological and biased, but to fight most of all for an understanding that if we fight together, we can fight and we can beat the government. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I just want to bring uh, solidarity from my union to all of the public sector workers and protection. Uh, it's uh, RMT's tradition uh, and intention uh, and political uh, will uh, to fight to defend members wherever they are, uh, whether they're in the private sector or the public sector. And we believe we need to link up those fights uh, to be successful, to overthrow the attacks uh, on workers' pensions from this government and from any future government. Uh, who might have the same idea. Uh, we're going to need to bring the uh, five, six million public sector workers uh, who are in pension schemes together with the 23 million private sector workers uh, of whom only about two million even have a defined benefit, benefit pension scheme. <laughs> core uh, issues of paying more, getting less and working longer stemmed from a poisonous political consensus that cuts are inevitable and there's no alternative to the market. And that's summed up in a way that they parrot the, the slogan from Ed Miliband and the rest that the cuts are too deep and are too fast. 
In the six richest country in the world, there is no need for any cuts, including in our sustainable and affordable pensions. And I think this event can be the kick-off point for real resistance and a real attempt to change the unions and take them back into the hands of the membership. But I think it would have given everybody in this room a great deal of pleasure to have been in Belfast on the 30th of November, to have seen the tremendous strike action that took place in Northern Ireland at that time, where we saw all sectors, all sectors, having very successful action. Education was shut down across Northern Ireland. 70 80 percent of schools closed down. Universities were in strike. Tech colleges were in strike. In health, the health service was, was on strike. Local government was on strike. And the civil service was on strike. But perhaps a little bit of a difference between Northern Ireland and here was that transport, public transport, was also on strike. That meant there were no buses and no trains because public transport workers in Northern Ireland are part of the local government scheme as well. It gave a feel of a general strike on the day. And what you had going around cities like Derry and Belfast was every street had two or three picket lines on it. In Belfast, there was a central demonstration with feeder demonstrations coming from four areas marching through the city. And comrades, what it was on that day, we controlled the streets. We are well used the demonstrations in Northern Ireland. They're normally green Tories or orange Tories leading the latest sectarian demonstration on March. On that day, Catholic and Protestants stood together as workers taken over from the What is being now paraded by the leadership as gains in those negotiations was all on the table in advance of the 30th of November. The protection for people aged 55 and above was on the table before we went on strike. What will the government think when they see that the most united issue that the public sector could fight on ends in a victory to the government? It may as well say, right, well, let's see where we can get with the cuts and with the attacks and the privatisation, uh, which is their, their bottom line, which is their agenda. What we've seen over the past couple of years will seem like nothing to what they come across. If they think they've got the trade unions defeated and demoralised and incapable of defending in a united manner even their own, uh, even their own pension schemes. In a sense, we have to fight on our own. I appreciate John McDonnell and others coming along here to give their support today. But we have to recognise us individual Labour MPs. I have heard a copy of Labour's election manifesto which talked about saving tough decisions on public sector pensions to cap the taxpayers' liability, saving £1 billion a year. And we've seen the support, or lack of support, from Ed Moribund, as far as the 30th of June is concerned, and the 30th of November. We need more events like today. We need to share information. We need to support coordination across the union. And I welcome particularly the last bullet point of the statement. I hope we're going to agree unanimously. Uh, but finally, I'll finish with this. I know the hashtag for today was supposed to be rejecting fight. But I would like to suggest that there is a better hashtag that we've been offered, and that's damage limitation in my arse. <laughs> the 30th of November has brought new layer, layers of workers to the unions, but not just new layers of workers, but new layers of activists. And it's not the usual suspects that you see on the picket lines and on the demo, so of course it was a fantastic move. And it's the first time that many had taken a, a strike action and had uh, gone and demoed. So members were saying, you know, what do you actually do on a strike? Because many haven't been on a strike before. And I, I do think it's the first time that members and workers have felt their potential power uh, for some time. And I do think it's a power to be built on and not to be squandered by our union leadership. I think we have to throw everything at this campaign because what, what can be built in the recall from a potential sellout or potential job losses? We have built a magnificent campaign.
campaign, if you like, in the end stages of uh, the fight against privatisation. This is not 2006, when we had our last pension uh, struggle. That was at the tail end of a boom. What we are facing now is a poisonous cocktail in the workplaces of people who are facing downgrades, of people who are losing their jobs. And then a younger generation coming in who will have no rights and will be treated no better than slaves. And I think that the fight we put up in the next week and the next month is crucial. Uh, so, from our perspective, uh, the really crucial thing to do is to name uh, dates for further strike action by public sector workers and then to find ways to spread that fight into private sector workers so that they too can demand the right uh, to have a proper uh, defined benefit pension that gives them security in retirement uh, from the threat of poverty and old age. And after the end of N30 strike, all of our union leaders saying it was the biggest strike since 1926, demonstrations taking place in towns unheard of before and now in the last few days in order to try to demoralise our members, to seek to divide and rule. The elected head of health has gone out publicly in writing saying the strike failed in the health service is weak and there's no mood uh, to go any further. And just uh, the day before yesterday, the head of local government telling workers in the North West, well we know you will want to strike in the North, but it's the South, South, South Southerners and down the South it is weak. That is the scandal that's being portrayed by unelected, overpaid, full-time officials of our trade unions. And I welcome the statements of Mark Walker and the other comrades of the other unions about naming and organising further action. If there is to be a ballot in unison, if there is to be special conferences tried to be organised, our best chance of winning either of those positions is with the other unions breathing down the neck, having named the day for further industrial action. Because we remember... Yes, and I welcome a practical coordinating committee being called because we have a dual battle here for some of us. We are faced with the fight of our lives of literally 700,000 of our jobs to go in the next few years. Attack on our pay and attack on our conditions. We have to be able to organise and have a leadership worthy of organising our members. And for those of us in unions like Unison, we have a dual task to say to and demand to our union leaders, lead or step aside, and it is part of this battle to reclaim the unions that are worthy of their members for genuine fighting and democratic trade unions. Thank you very much. Uh, well, thanks uh, very much. My name's Martin Mayer. I'm chair of the United Left, the socialist rank and file movement in the United <laughs> Union. Dennis, thanks very much for the initiative from PCS Left Unity in setting up this conference today. Uh, we had a little caucus meeting of, uh, I would say, about 40 United members here. I think we all felt a debt of gratitude to you to give us the opportunity to discuss a fighting back strategy for the way forward. Just to give you a little bit of a flavour of our caucus meeting, um, there's total resolve within Unite. Uh, to ensure that we're with you, Janice, and the PCS, and with the other unions. To finish by saying, and I refer to Martin's comments from Unite, pensions is a critical issue. It is assumed, quite rightly, a symbolism in this political struggle, an industrial struggle, but it is only part of a much wider struggle against the attempts of the Tory and Liberals to roll back all the major social gains achieved by the organised working class over the last hundred years. We have to remember that pensions is part of that struggle. It's about fighting against all cuts. It's against fighting the attempt to soften up the public sector in readiness for privatisation. But most importantly, this gives us a chance to start talking about what sort of world we want to live in. And it gives us a chance for the trade union movement to start posing, yes, on the one hand, we're going to fight your plans. Yes, we're going to mobilise and develop and provide the most important ingredient, which is confidence, but it's also an opportunity to start posing a very serious alternative to the madness of capitalism. Thanks for listening.